So compounding, Albert Einstein says it's the eighth wonder of the world. Let's look what actually is compounding. And the way we wanted to describe it, or our definition of compounding, is that it is growth on growth. I.e. something grows, and then that thing that grows, grows again, and then all of that growth grows again. And if you imagined it as your money having babies, that would be the way I would kind of describe it. So imagine your money had babies, and then those babies grew up. But the parents kept having babies. So now the parents have had babies, the kids have had babies, they've all had babies, and then they grow up, and then everyone has babies including the parents. Imagine if your parents had never stopped having babies. <laughs> How many kids would you have in your family? And then those babies grow up and all of a sudden you've got like everyone having babies and then it keeps expanding. And then you're like, how many babies are there? And that is how you end up with a huge amount of money at the end because your money babies keep having babies. And that's kind of our description of it. There are busy miswives birthing your money out there. Let's have a different way of looking at this. How about we have a game of golf? Let's bet just 20 pence, 20 cents, whatever your currency on that first hole. And every hole that we play, let's double the bet. So the next hole will bet 40 pence. The following hole 80. will be 80 pence. Where do you think we would get to by the 18th hole? There are 18 holes in a game of golf. How much will we be betting on that 18th hole if we double the bet every single hole? What, what do you think? What do you think it would be? Do you think it would be £10? Do you think it would be 100 million? Well, it's interesting. Like hole three is 80, hole four is 160, and it kind of keeps going up. But by the end of the first nine, you're only betting 50 quid. That's not too bad. Like, I can live with that. I won't go bankrupt if I lose against Katie. Um, but the second nine holes, it really starts to grow. And by hole 13, you're at 819 pounds. By hole 14, you're at 1,600 pounds. So then 15th hole, you're at 3,000. 16th at 6,000. But by hole 18, you're betting a whopping 26,000 pounds. And that's the bit is our brains can't really comprehend how much that doubles to over time. And this is the power of compounding. So it looks like nothing's really happening at the beginning. So you're starting with that 20 pence or 20 cents and it's doubling. But because of the scale of the graph, it looks like nothing whatsoever is happening. We're still the same at like the 12th hole. And then suddenly, can you see how it starts to take off? And you're suddenly on the 18th hole at over 26,000 when at hole nine, halfway along, you're at 50 pounds. Like, how is this even possible? That is the power of compounding, and that is why Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. Now, this all comes back to the gap, the gap between your spending and your income and how much you have. And if you've got a positive gap and that money is invested, that money grows for you. And over time, it compounds for you. Compounding works for you. If you are in debt... Your debt is compounding against you. And that is what we really wanted to highlight is the compounding nature of debt is the same as the compounding nature of growth. And I asked AI to draw me an image of compounding debt. This is what it created. It was very scary. Dark. We don't want that happening <laughs> to us. Um, so this is what we want to do is work compounding for you. Quick disclaimer at the start. We are not financial advisors. This is not financially regulated advice. We're not financial advisors. We are never going to try and tell you anything. You make your own decisions. We are sharing our opinions. These ideas may or may not work for us in the future or for you. You're 100% responsible for your financial future. Okay. People often ask us, so does that mean for compounding to work, I need to put all my money in one place? I should just have like one account, one way of investing so that it compounds more quickly? Because you've told me, you know, the more you put in, the more quickly it will compound. The answer is no. And let me show you and convince you why that's the case. So imagine you had two accounts, you put 100 in each account and it grows by 10%. So after a year in each of those accounts, you'd have 110. Whereas if you were to put it and you'd have 220 in total, so 110 from the first account, 
110 from the second account. What if instead of putting it in two different accounts, you just had it in one place? So you had 200 and that grew by 10%. Well, that would grow to 220 as well. So there's actually no difference whatsoever. And there are reasons why you might have your money in different places, which we'll come on to in the investing weeks. But just to say that there's, it, it doesn't make any difference. It will all compound together collectively. Exactly. And Katie has created some brand new examples. So we'd like, first of all, to introduce Ellie. This, Here is Ellie. This is Ellie. So she comes along to the whole of Rebel Finance School. After the investing weeks, she's like, yeah, let's do it. She invests 200 a month from now for the next 20 years. So overall, she's investing 48,000 in total. And then we've got Larry. Larry also comes to Rebel Finance School. But after the investing weeks, he doesn't actually like take any action. He doesn't do anything. Then 10 years later, he's like, oh, I should probably get on with this now. So not just investing 200 a month, Larry decides that he's going to invest 400 a month. So double what Ellie's investing, but he's doing it for the following 10 years. So he waited 10 years to start and then invested for 10 years, whereas Ellie was investing all the way along for 20 years. So they've invested exactly the same amount. The question for all of you is who has more at the end and why? Why is that the case? Yeah, if they invested the same amount, why does Ellie have more than Larry? I'm curious to know how much more do you think Ellie has at the end? So is it 25,000 more? 50,000? 75,000 or 100,000 more. And this is the interesting bit. This is the bit we really wanted to say is how compounding can be a bit confusing over time and our brains don't really work out what it is. What is the answer? So I'm going to tell you the answer in the form of graph. So this is my love language. I, and we started from 10 years. So along the bottom, we've got how many years have passed and we're starting at 10 because that's when Larry gets involved. So at 10 years, Ellie's already got 50 grand and Larry's just getting off the, I was about to say getting off the toilet, getting off the pot. <laughs> is that a phrase? I've made that up. And then let's look what happens over time. So this is showing the years as things go on. And we it use... looks like Larry's catching up because he's started to invest. He's getting involved. He's sort of closing the gap-ish. And, and Katie then, based this on real market data. So this is the real data of what actually happened in the market over the last 20 years. And you can see at this point, Ellie's started to take off. And yeah, Larry's not looking like he's ever going to catch up. The market went down a little bit at that point, And then it surged back up as it always does. And the key here is to see that both of them have had that benefit of compounding. But Larry's lagging behind. So Larry's got just under 100 grand. So he's doubled his money. He's done pretty well. He's there, done pretty he? well. Whereas Ellie, who started earlier, but invested the same amount has got over a hundred grand more. So if you put the answer D that she would have a hundred thousand more, you were correct. And that is what we want to get into is that power of compounding, the power of taking action and starting now. She actually quadrupled her money. So she invested 48 and ends up with 200. So she trounces late Larry, they invest the same amount, but Ellie has double, double the amount just because she took action and started earlier. Now we've hey. got Gloria. So we've got Ellie. <laughs> Larry and Gloria. Gloria yes. comes along. Tell me about Gloria. Uh, Gloria is very excited. After the investing weeks of Rebel Finance School, she starts investing straight away. She puts in 200 a month and she decides to work on her gap. So she just works on her gap and she just increases it by 1% from now for 20 years. So she just gradually earns slightly more keeps her spending down and then invest that gap in her future. So we've got a chart to show you the difference by just increasing your gap slightly. So the blue line's Larry. This is after 10 years, nothing's happened because he didn't get involved. The orange line is Ellie and the green line is Gloria. So you can see even at the 10 year point, she's already starting to eclipse what Ellie's doing for obvious reasons. She's investing more and she's just increasing her gap focusing on it by just 1% every single month. And can you see here at the end how uh, how Gloria in that green line is really taking off as well? And it looked before like Ellie was doing well, which she has as well, of course. But look at this increase as well when Gloria works on her gap. 
So Ellie ended up with 200 grand. Just by working on the gap and investing the difference, Gloria ends up with over half a million, which is just insane. So the moral of the story, gappy Gloria trances early Ellie. That is the moral of this story for everyone here. So they start with that same monthly investment, uh, but Gloria has more than double. And I just want to get to you how much these small improvements add up over time. So Ellie, sorry, Gloria, starting with her 200 investment that very first month. And if she's increasing her monthly investment every month by 1%, after 20 years, how much do you think her last contribution is? And Alan might have given the answer away. Hopefully you were blinking at that point. <laughs> how much do you think that last contribution was? That was my big reveal. Complete fail. Absolutely I've ruined it. ruined it. I should be sacked. Someone sack me right now. Um, so what's the point of all this, Alan? Everyone is better than never bothered Ned. Never bothered Ned, never got into investing. He put no pounds in. He has nothing whatsoever. Uh, and this is the point where people usually go, hang on a minute, Donegans. I don't even have a gap. Like, I don't have a gap. Like, well, how did this, none of this is relevant for me. Compounding will never be my friend. And they look a bit sad. And, but it always comes back to the gap. How can you get a gap? But people say to us, I can't get a gap. I can't increase my gap. That's actually where we have to start. And that's where we need to smash those beliefs and start believing that it is possible. That's what last week was all about. So we talked about money mindset in the main session, and then we smashed some of Will's legs out. So <laughs> beliefs have legs which give them the power to as to what you believe and we worked through one of will's beliefs and smashed his legs which i really enjoyed <laughs> will enjoyed it too so if you are sort of relating to these thoughts of i can't ever possibly increase my gap that's a belief that's something you believe to be true go back and watch those episodes if you haven't already and that's where we need to start we need to start that you believe that it's possible and then okay now i believe it's possible how do i actually do it so we track the gap and we reduce our spending, which we've got a whole workshop on living large on a small budget, how to get more for less. And we have a whole workshop on breaking free of the salary trap and increasing your income, because those are your two options, spend less or earn more. Most people focus on spending less. You can actually make a huge impact if you work on increasing your income. And that gap will make such a difference over time. The other people think Thing that people say to us when we say about you know how to work towards retirement they say well I could never earn those sorts of numbers you're telling me that if I want to earn, live off 40 grand a year I need to have a million invested how am I going to get to that million invested well the answer is you don't have to earn those sorts of numbers so let's show you this again in my love language the form of a chart so we've got Larry Ellie and Gloria and also Ned so the yellow box is what they put in. So Larry put in 48,000. And then the blue box is what compounding did. So Larry put in 48 and he got 48 from compounding. His money doubled. What happened to Ellie? Ellie started a little bit earlier. She put in 40 grand. And over those extra years, it grew by 155,000. So we just want you to get like, she did not put all of that money in. It's the growth that did it. And then if you look at Gloria, she did put in a lot more. She put in 200 grand, but the growth is insane on that. And then everyone's better than Ned because he put in nothing and he got nothing whatsoever. So, you know, good luck, Ned. But what we really wanted you to get from all of this is compounding is doing the work for you. You don't have to earn all of the money. Let compounding do the heavy lifting for you. That's the piece. Lots of people then say, well, it's too late for me. Uh, and they go, I don't have time for compounding to work. Well, if you're 60, you're probably still going to be alive for 22 years. You still have some time left. You're not dead yet. Well, actually, maybe we should check. Uh, please, will you go to the mirror and breathe into it? I want you to go at the mirror if you see some like steam on the mirror some residue. some residue you are alive you have time you're if the mirror does not steam up 
please call a doctor immediately. We should be worried. You have time to do this. And no matter how old you are, you will always be better than never bothered Ned. Everyone is better than someone who does nothing. So even just taking small actions will change everything. So if you're thinking I'm never going to earn enough, the answer is you don't have to. And don't just trust us, trust the maths and the compounding that works over time. But our brains really struggle to, to compute this, to capture this. What are we saying here, Alan? What we're saying is compounding is really confusing. As with the examples, not many people guessed the results. When we were doing this, we were very confused at the beginning because nothing happened. Compounding confused us. And then we're very confused at the end because compounding did so much. And what we're generally saying is compounding will confuse you. We need to look at the maths and have a look at it. And to give you the real life example of this, two days ago, three days ago, uh, Katie and I were doing our monthly finance meeting. So this is us doing our monthly finance meeting. Our investments went up in one month, £52,000. And our brains were like, how, do, how is this even possible? So what we're trying to say to you is, compounding will confuse you at the beginning and it will confuse you at the end but that doesn't mean you can't use it you can't start investing and make progress and then our final example before we wrap up compounding how long does compounding take to work it starts straight away and the longer you leave it the more it does the less time you have the less it does so it doesn't really matter just start and it will start to work. So this is about what we've called baby financial independence. That is indeed Katie <laughs> as a baby. So there is Katie as a baby. I think the arms that you're looking at are my brothers who is off screen, but holding me affectionately. Exactly. So I want you to imagine, please, that you had invested 10 grand at birth, whatever currency, dollars, doesn't really matter, 10 grand at birth for your niece, your nephew, your kids. If you invested 10 grand a birth, how much would that be at retirement for that baby? And we're talking standard retirement age, right? So yep. like 68, which is the standard in the UK. Well, the interesting thing is if you've got 10% growth over that period, your baby would be worth 6 million at retirement age. It's just insane how that grows and our brain can't compute it. So if you happen to be having a grandkid right now, you could set them up for the rest of their life if you wanted to. You might not be able to do this for yourself, but you could do it for someone else. And you can use it for yourself still. So you have time in your life for it to grow. And so also just like scaling those figures as well. You might say, well, I don't have 10,000 to invest straight away. We're just saying start as early as you can we're not saying it needs to be ten thousand. that's an example to show you the power of this compounding malarkey so what we'd love to know what have you learned what inspired you what turned you off and what has happened to your money beliefs about this sort of stuff we would love to know